In this video, we're going to do some exam style questions on differentiation. In the first question, it says the normal to the curve y equals x to the half minus 3x to the quarter at the point where x is equal to 1 crosses the x-axis at a and the y-axis at b. We're asked to find the area of a triangle AOB where O is the origin. OK, what we need to do first is find the normal. For the normal, all we need are two things. We need a point and a gradient. Remember, a normal is a straight line as we've seen before. So let's go ahead now and find the point. We've got the x coordinate of 1, so y is going to be equal to x to the half. Well, 1 to the half is just 1, minus 3 lots of 1 to the quarter, which is going to give me 1. 1 subtract 3 is going to give me negative 2. So we've got the point 1 comma negative 2. What we now need is a gradient. When you're doing this in an exam, obviously work down the page so the examiner can see what you're doing. I'm just writing in space I've got so I can keep seeing uh, or referring to the question rather than scrolling back. If we take the derivative of this function, we can find the gradient function for the tangent. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So what we're going to have then is dy by dx, the gradient function for the tangent, we multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1. We multiply down by the power and we drop the power by 1. So that's going to give me that the derivative or gradient function is 1 half x to the negative half and then we're going to have minus 3 quarters x to the negative 3 quarters. We can say when x is equal to 1, dy dx is going to be equal now to 1 half. All we're going to have here is just the 1 and then minus 3 quarters of 1. So what's that going to give me now? 1 half minus 3 quarters is going to give me now negative 1 over 4. So what we can say, if m1 is equal to negative 1 over 4, m2 is going to be equal to positive 4, as m1 multiplied by m2 will be equal to negative 1 if perpendicular. Some exams don't require this, so do check. I'm simply writing down now the gradient of the normal. If the gradient of a tangent is going to be now negative a quarter, this now is the negative reciprocal. I'm now going to take these points and substitute them into a straight line. So y subtract negative 2 will be equal on here and we're going to have here the gradient which is going to be 4 and then we're going to have now x minus 1. So if we look at this we're going to have y is equal to 4x then we're going to have minus 4 minus another 2 which is going to give me minus 6. So this is going to be now the equation of the normal. I didn't need to change that. I've just written it now as y is equal to mx plus c. I'm now going to go ahead and draw a quick sketch of what we've got. So we're going to consider point A. Now point A is where it crosses the x-coordinate. So at A, what we've got is y is equal to 0. So if y is equal to 0... 6 will be equal to 4x, 6 over 4 is going to be equal to x, so x is going to be equal to 3 over 2, and let's put that just there. So this is the point now, 3 over 2, comma 0. All we're interested in in this length it being 3 over 2. If we consider b, x is going to be equal to 0, so nice and straightforward, y is going to be 4 lots of 0 minus 6, that's negative 6. So that point is going to be just down here, and that is going to be 0, comma, negative 6. This length right here is 6. So what I want is the area of a right-angled triangle, and I'm just going to bring this up. I'm going to bring that across and bring that down. So we've got now O, which is the origin, and the area is going to be equal to 1 half the base. The base is 3 over 2 multiplied by the height. The height is 6. Obviously, we don't write negative as it's a length. And that's going to give us now, if we simplify that, that's going to give us now 9 over 2, and that will be units squared. 
So that's the area of the triangle. All I've done is found a point, a gradient, substitute it into the equation of a straight line and consider now where it crosses the coordinate axis. Okay, question 17. The tangent to the curve y is equal to 3x squared plus 4x plus 1 at the point where x is equal to negative 1 intersects the line y is equal to 3x minus 12 at the point p. We need to find the coordinates of p. We've got a tangent again, so the first thing I'm going to do is find now the point and the gradient and get the equation of a tangent. Remember, a tangent is just a straight line and that's why we need the point and the gradient. So when x is equal to 1, y is going to be equal to, sorry, negative 1, y is going to be equal to 3 lots of negative 1 squared plus 4 lots of negative 1 plus 1. So that's going to give me 3 minus 4 plus 1, which is 0. So the point now is going to be negative 1, 0. We need a gradient for the tangent. Well, that is dy by dx. dy by dx, multiplying down by the power and dropping the power by 1, will be 6x plus 4. We don't need to show plus 0, as it would be expected. At this stage, we know that differentiating a constant gives us 0. So we can say when x is equal to negative 1, dy dx will be equal to 6 lots of negative 1 plus the 4, which is going to give us negative 6 plus the 4, which is negative 2. So negative 2. So that is now sorted. So let's go ahead now and show the tangent. Substituting into a straight line, y minus 0 is equal to the gradient, negative 2 x subtract negative 1, which is plus 1. That will simplify to give us negative 2x minus 2. So that's what we've got. What I now need to do are simultaneous equations. 1, we've got negative 2x, so let's just write y is equal to. Uh, it would be easier to go that way. Let's write it out here. So we can write y is equal to negative 2x subtract 2. We've got equation 2, y is equal to 3x minus 12. So if y is equal to negative 2x minus 2 and y is equal to 3x minus 12, we can simply set those equal. So negative 2x subtract 2 is equal to 3x subtract 12. So that's going to give me 10 is equal to 5x and x is going to be equal to 2. Okay, so x is equal to 2. That is the x-coordinate of p. We need to substitute in now. So y, either equation, is going to be 3 lots of 2. Then we subtract 12, which is going to give us now negative 6. So y is equal to negative 6. So we can write p is 2 comma negative 6. So that gives us now the point of intersection, p. So all we've done is found the equation of a tangent, set it equal to another line, and solve simultaneous equations. OK, let's move on and look at another question. So in question 18, we're asked to find the coordinates of a point on the curve y is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared plus x, where d2y by dx squared is equal to 16. So what we need to do is differentiate the function once, differentiate it again and set that equal to 16. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first derivative, dy by dx squared, sorry, dy by dx, we're going to have 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. Second derivative, d2y by dx squared, that's going to give us 6x plus 4 plus a zero. Therefore, what we can do is simply state now that 16 is equal to 6x plus 4. 12 is equal to 6x, and we can see on here that x is equal to 2. If x is equal to 2, all we need to do is substitute in here. So y is equal to 2 cubed plus 2 lots of 2 squared plus the 2. So that's going to be 8, then we're going to have plus 8, then we're going to have plus the 2, and that's going to give us 18. So we can say now, find the coordinates, the coordinates are 2, 
comma 18. So with that question, that would maybe part of a question. Um, it's relatively straightforward as long as you know what you're doing and you can find those points. So a relatively straightforward exam style question. Okay, let's look at another question 19. Show that the point 5 comma 2 lies on the tangent of the curve y is equal to x multiplied by the quantity root x minus 1 at the point where x is equal to 1. So the first thing we need is a tangent. So we'll go for a point and the gradient just here. So just jotting that down. So when x is equal to 1, y will be equal to 1. Then we're going to have the square root of 1 minus 1. That's going to give us y is equal to 0. So the point is going to be 1 comma 0. What we need is a gradient. The first thing I need to do is simplify this. We're not yet uh, going to use the product rule, and I don't think you would anyway. Um, but what we've got is x multiplied by root x. Remember, the root of x is x to the half. So x to the first multiplied by x to the half, we add the powers. So this would give us now 1 and a half, or x to the power of 3 over 2. Multiplying through, then I'm just going to have minus x. So dy by dx is a gradient function of the tangent. We multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1. And multiplying down by the power and dropping the power by 1, we're going to get now minus 1. So we can say when x is equal to 1, dy by dx, the gradient function, will be 3 over 2. 1 to the half power is 1 minus 1. So that's going to give us now, we've got 1 and a half minus 1, which is going to give us positive 1 half. That is the gradient of the tangent. All we're going to do now is write out the tangent. And again, when you're doing this in exam, it'd be a lot neater. I'm just finding space. Straight line, y minus 0 is equal to 1 half x minus 1. Entirely up to you on how you want to do this. I'm just going to write it as y is equal to 1 half of x minus 1. So now we're going to sub in the coordinates. So what I'm going to do is sub in the coordinates. I'm going to write when x is equal to 5 y is equal to 1 half of 5 minus 1. This is going to give me 1 half now of 4, which is going to give 2. And I'm being very explicit in my work. Therefore, the point, let's just jot this on, the point on here, 5 comma 2 now lies on the tangent. So, Make sure when you're doing a show that question that you're very explicit in what you do. Even if it takes a little longer, it's worth showing. So show that the point 5 comma 2 lies on the tangent to the curve. I've gone ahead and done that. Simply subbed in x is 5 and shown full workings. And that gives me 2. So there we go, four exam questions. They varied in terms of the difficulty. Um, in an exam, you might have a multi-step question. Uh, but generally speaking, these might be all of it or part of that question. They might also be structured. It might say find the tangent for one uh, part of it and show that that point lies on for another part. So whilst these haven't been structured, they've encompassed most um, sorts of things that you would be expected to answer in exam style questions.